Now then crew and welcome back to the Andy Mechanic YouTube channel. Now um, tool girl Hannah was supposed to be down today and we're going to do a service on her car and be some great videos uh, but all that's going to be delayed now so my apologies until next Saturday. She got called away last minute to do some work on a movie set so good on her tool girl Hannah. Hope you have fun today. But it sort of left me with a bit of a hole uh, to do today in the workshop. I hadn't really planned anything else as a plan B and I thought well I'll tell you what there's one thing that sprung to mind and one of the viewers said to me hey Andy how does the spark plug gap affect the burn time of the spark in the cylinder? And I thought well, that's a really good question because you know people sometimes think that they can increase the gap on the spark plug to make a bigger spark and that's probably going to help the engine to run better and burn more fuel or maybe make the spark plug gap a bit smaller and how does that affect what's really going on with the spark be it the kV the the voltage the kilovolts um, or the amount of time that, that spark burns for and of course an oscilloscope just like the the picoscope automotive scope that I've got here um, is an ideal tool uh, to use for that sort of analysis. So I was thinking, well, okay, how am I going to do this? And um, another thing sprung to mind that, that sort of... I remember telling my students about this, and it was something that I experienced before I was even a lecturer, is sometimes you take the spark, you know, your engine won't start, and you take the spark plug out of the, out of the cylinder head, and you rest it on the cylinder head, you ground it to the cylinder head, crank the engine over, and see if you've got a spark at the spark plug. And sure enough, sometimes you could have a spark at the spark plug, and you put the spark plug back into the engine, and it just doesn't fire. But when you take it back out again, it's wet with fuel, and you think, well, the engine's getting fuel, and it's obviously getting air. Why is it not firing? And the reason for that is it takes a much higher voltage uh, to create a spark across the same size gap when it's uh, within a, a high pressure environment like in the cylinder than it would do when it's you know resting on top of the cylinder head in, in atmospheric pressure and in all honesty for quite a few years I wasn't aware of that I always thought hey if I can get see a spark on the spark plug on top of the head it's going to be sparking in the cylinder and that isn't always the case so this morning I went out because I couldn't find my other one and bought a spark tester now there's lots of these around and, and in all honesty from what I've found online they're not particularly good quality. Um, so if you're aware of a really good spark tester, one that's you know got millimeters on the scale so you can take a pretty accurate reading of how far the spark jumps, then let me know because I had a quick look around today and there was not a lot available to be honest and they're not really designed for really accurate testing, it's just a, a, a rough guide. and. I made one a while ago out of a piece of wood and a couple of screws, you know, just to do some sort of basic testing. And using that, I diagnosed a fault on a, a Mazda MPV. The coil pack was faulty. One of the three coils was way down on, on output and it wouldn't jump. I think it only jumped about a 5 mil gap. The other two coils were jumping about a 15 mil gap and the problem was a misfire. So, you know, it just shows that you can, with a bit of common sense and rummage around the garage, you can actually make things that will help you to diagnose faults. But I thought well I'll go out today and I'll go and pick up whatever sort of spark test is available this morning because I needed something a bit more accurate for this test. And I picked up one of these. Now it's made by that company there, Toledo. And it says famous. Well I don't think they're famous for the right things. Uh, this is the spark tester. Oh, wrong way around, there we are, look. And it's got a little screw thread and you can turn this and increase the gap here that the spark has to jump. But the problem is, for me, or was, if you see there, look, there's a lot of play on the threads. And of course that gap is quite a bit bigger in that position than it is when it's there. And I wanted to do some accurate sort of readings. So anyway, I've sort of modified it a bit now and I've, I've got rid of the original, the original thread, threaded rod. I just happened to find a battery clamp with the same thread that just seems to be a lot tighter. This one here, look, seems to be a lot tighter on the thread. So when I screw that in, it doesn't wobble around anywhere near as much, even though it's the same thread. Really. So I put a little point on the end of that. 
I'll just screw it in for you. Here you go, look. There you are. And now, it doesn't really wiggle around anywhere as much. It's a lot more accurate, and that's what I wanted for this particular task, but I'm still not very happy with the quality of this thing. But it gave me what I needed. It gave me the little threads to go into the spark plug cap and stuff, so and it, it wasn't expensive. So, in this video, because I can hear you saying, Andy gets the point, in this video, what I want to do is use the Picoscope in conjunction with the external spark tester to basically look at the waveform created on the secondary winding, the high tension voltage, and see how the, the gap that the spark has to jump affects both the maximum voltage of the spark, the KV voltage, and the duration of burn time, how long that spark actually burns for jumping the gap. Now the theory is that the larger the gap that the spark has to jump, of course, the higher the voltage has to be to get the spark to jump. And obviously, you know, on cars and motorcycles and things, there's going to be a limit. If the gap is ultimately too big, the spark can't jump across because the voltage can't get high enough, and of course you get a no spark situation. Just like with lightning, you know, outside, that's millions and millions of volts to get the, the spark, the lightning, to get to ground onto the earth, onto the earth's surface, and that's a very long way it has to jump. So, I thought what we'd do is we'd rig up the picoscope to, to the laptop, and we'll set the spark tester at sort of about five mil, uh, sorry, 0.5 millimeters of a gap, which is very, very small. Most spark plugs that I've come across are 0 0.8, 0 0.9 of a millimeter gap. Uh, and then I worked out the pitch of the thread, and for every turn, every full 360 degree turn of this rod, will increase the gap by about 1.3 millimeters, and we'll take 10 readings. I think by the time we get to 10 turns of this, uh, on this particular bike at least, the sp there won't be sufficient voltage output from the, uh, the secondary winding for it to the spark to be able to jump that gap and we'll get the no spark situation. And we can basically measure the burn time and the peak voltage um, using the scope and uh, we can put together some kind of a, a table to see really how that gap affects uh, voltage peak voltage and burn time. I thought it would be quite interesting. And then what I'd like to do as a second part to this is then test, do the same test with the spark plug in the cylinder with a 0.9 millimeter gap which is what this bike should have and then we can refer that to the table that we did with the spark in atmosphere so that you can say well actually we need to check to make sure that we've got a spark that will jump let's say for example five millimeters in atmospheric pressure for it to be able to jump a 0.9 mil gap in cylinder pressure. You follow me? Yeah, I hope so. Because, you know, interesting. And I do like playing around with the scope. And this bike is just about to go. And, uh, yeah, it sort of lends itself pretty well to this experiment. Oh, and by the way, the battery that came off it that was a bit duff when we were first trying to start it, that has come back to life. I had to top up the electrolyte on two of the cells. The two of them were very, very low indeed, um, but now they're back up to maximum and it's fully charged and it's very happy. It starts the bike just fine, so I didn't need to buy a new battery. Okay, so we're going to head over to the laptop. We're going to plug this in and uh, we're also going to be using, in order to, to get a signal from the high tension lead, the HT lead, we're going to be using this accessory that comes with the automotive scope. And basically all it does is it's an inductive type sensor and it clips onto the HT lead uh, that runs down to the spark plug and it's going to give us a signal into the oscilloscope. Now when you're using one of these it's very very important you must put the earth clamp down to ground and don't try to fit it or take it off whilst the engine's running and the ignition is on because you might get a shock. That's what the warning sign says. I mean I used to test for spark by holding HT leads and feel, see if I could feel the, feel the shock so I'm probably way beyond all that, but I, I would hate for someone nowadays on a modern vehicle, because the, the voltages are much, much higher than the old motorcycles I used to work on, um, yeah, it could actually cause quite a problem, and yeah, not good. So be very careful if you're doing this at home. 
Okay, right, well let's head over to the laptop and get this thing fired up. Here we go. Right, so Fred, so we'll plug in the old USB cable. It goes in there. Right, HT lead is here. This is the cap that goes onto the spark plug, which is hiding down there. And we're just going to clip that onto there like that. And then all that's left is to connect the earth. I'm going to do that down the bottom where there's an engine mount. Right, so we'll just plug that one, clip that onto there, I think. That should work. It's well out of the way. Right, channel A, which is that one there, look. Just pop that onto there. Done. Okay, so Pigo 6 automotive software is now launching. And once it's on the screen, we can click onto the automotive tab and we can go down here to ignition and then we can choose distributor stroke wasted spark and we're doing the secondary and it's a negative fired system so we'll click on there now it does two things, it'll set the scope up for us but it'll also launch a page and give us some information about how to take the signal and what the waveform really means there we go look now, you can go onto the PicoScope website and you can read all about this if you want. And I'll give you a link in the description at the bottom, but we can close that for now. Don't need that. Okay, so just to double check then, we've got one millisecond uh, division. We're doing uh, 500 on the sampling. And um, it's minus 5 to positive 20 kilovolts on the range. That's up here. And we're on DC. Okay, so the next job, and that's an example waveform, um, the next job is to go and connect the Spark tester because we're doing the, uh, the Spark testing externally in atmosphere to start off with. Right, what I like to do is to clamp this thing down if I can, try to make it a bit more accurate. So I'm just going to, I've set the gap to um, 0 0.9 millimeters approximately as it would be on a standard spark plug gap on this bike. That's the, the spec. Right, that's now in place. That's set at 0.9 is the gap just inside there. And you can see even now there's a little bit of movement on that rod, which I'm not very happy about, but there's not a lot I can do about it. We'll plug in the, uh, there we go, look, HT lead. That's all set up. And now I can accurately turn this so one full revolution will increase that gap by 1.3 millimeters. And we're going to do 10 separate readings um, at 1.3 millimeter increments, starting at 0 0.9 millimeters, which is what it is now. Cool, now there's one more thing we need to do. We need to ground this. So I'll just whiz and get um, a little fly lead and we'll connect that up. Okay, so we can use this to ground, ground that wire. And uh, we'll just put it on that on the cylinder there. Look, make sure there's no paint. Obviously, there we go. Cool. So now I can turn that to increase the gap. Right. So we'll take the first reading at the standard gap, 0 0.9 mil. Okay. Back to the laptop. Okay. So we're all set up, and now obviously the engine's not going to start. I'm going to crank the engine over, and we're going to capture a waveform. Right. So ignition on. Let's start that capturing. There we go. Here we are. Right, fingers crossed. Excellent. Okay, so what have we got? Well, there's two things we're going to measure. One is our um, voltage, our high tension voltage. That's the voltage of the um, of the spark, and we can measure that with this little tool and it goes to about there and we've got 6.7 kilovolts right I'll make a note of that and our burn time is this distance here so we'll close that off get rid of that line and we're going to measure the burn times the burn time is from here in actual fact we can zoom in if we want so we can just just do that Move the whole thing across a bit so we get a bit more accurate. Okay. It's all about accuracy, Mr. Young. Right, so that's the start of the spark and the end of the spark, which I think really 
geez, it's probably pretty up there, I would say. And that gives us 2.4 milliseconds. That's a very long burn time. 2.4 milliseconds. Cool. Okay. So the next job is to go and increase the gap. Let's have a wander around. Okay. So it's pointing about 1 o'clock. So all we need to do now is rotate it counterclockwise to increase the gap. So we'll turn that round back up to about the same position, there we go. And now the gap here should be 0 0.9 plus the 1.3 millimeters additional, which gives us a total of 2.2 millimeter gap, approximately. Right, let's take a new reading. Back to the oscilloscope. And now, okay, so we're gonna click on um, stop, and then we'll start again and take a new waveform. Now, obviously, there's a little bit of discrepancy between each one, and you can see that if I flick back on the pages, you can see that the burn time is changing a little bit from one to the other. We'll try and pick one that's about average. I think probably about that sort of length is about average, isn't it? Yeah. So we'll use that one. Okay, so first of all, we need to measure the voltage again. And the voltage is now 6.03, so 6.03 kV. Okay, we'll get rid of that. And let's measure the burn time. So that's where the start of the spark is. Just there, look. And the end of the spark, by the looks of it, is just there. 1.73 milliseconds. So it's getting shorter. Interesting. Okay, right. One more turn on the spark tester. Right, another full turn anti clockwise. There we go. Now, you guys want to watch the spark. I know you do. So I'll leave you here and just zoom you in on that bit while I sample the next one. This is the 3.5 millimeter gap, and we're just going to sample it right now. There we go. Right, let's see what we got. So we can zoom in a little bit. Accuracy is required. There we go. Okay, now as regards voltage, we got. 7.05 7.05 kilovolts hmm that's weird okay so we'll get rid of that and now we're going to measure the burn time so again to the start of the spark which is just there and then to where the spark finishes which I would say is about there 1.72 Seven, wow, well, seven one six. So yeah, seven two if you round it up, milliseconds. Okay, so the next job is to measure a gap of four point eight millimeters. Right, back to the bike. Okay, another full turn. Great stuff. So now the gap here, we're up to four point eight millimeter gap. That looks about right for me actually. 4.8 mil. Right. Another reading coming up. And we're just going to press the play and give it a crank. There we go. <clears throat> okay, we'll zoom in a bit just to give us a bit more accuracy. There we go. Now then, what have we got as regards the voltage? Eight point eight kilovolts. Wow, that shot up. Okay, we'll close that. And what have we got as regards the burn time? Well, let's go across to there on the peak. And I would say about there is the end of the spark. 
1.07 milliseconds. Wow, that's a lot shorter, isn't it? Okay, next one is 6.1 mil gap. There you go. Right, a bit of a close up now for you. So, one more turn will give us what we're we up to 6.1, yeah, 6.1 millimeter gap. So, I'm just going to rotate this around one full turn. There we go. Right, I'll let you guys watch the spark again. I'm going to head back to the laptop and take the next reading. Right, so what did we get? Definitely still sparking just fine. Um, so first job is voltage again. And the voltage is now 12.58. Oh, yeah, well, that's shot up, hasn't it? 12.58 kilovolts to jump a gap of 6.1 millimeters in atmosphere. Okay. Close that. I'll just spread this across a little bit so we can see a bit better what we're doing. And again, there we go, a little bit lined up, so accurate it needs to be on. That'll do. And the end of the spark, which I think is about there. Burn time 1.1 milliseconds. Well, it's gone up again, hasn't it? But only a fraction. So the burn time is still about the same. The voltage has gone up. Let's just check one of the other slides. Yeah, they are about the same. Look, ah, that one's a lot shorter burn time, as is that one, as is that one. Yeah, you see, there's a, there's a bit of variation, and really, if we're doing this super accurately, we'll, we'd measure all of them and take an average. I don't have time to do that. But saying that, all of these are a lot shorter. That might be when I've uh, yeah, stop cranking, but it would still spark. So maybe we should take it, take the readings a bit nearer the start. Maybe not that one, obviously. Let it settle down. I think maybe there. Let's have a go at doing that one. So let's close that. And voltage. Quick check on the voltage again. Uh, that one's thirteen point six five. So I'll just update that. 13.65 kilovolts and spark duration. That is one, two, and that's slide five. So we should take them all on slide five. Okay, so we've got. 0.71 of a millisecond. So that's a lot shorter, isn't it? That's more like it. 0.71 milliseconds. Cool. Okay. Fine. I'm cope with that. We'll see how the data looks. I might have to go back and redo a couple of them. Right. One more turn, which will take us to 7.4 mil. There we go. Right, you guys can watch the spark again. Back shortly. Okay, so we'll just clear all of that off and press play and we can crank. There we go. So what are we on? Uh, this is the 7.4 millimeter gap and we'll just go back to slide number five because it automatically starts to record as soon as I start cranking the engine, which is pretty cool. Okay, so voltage first of all is, let's have a little look what we've got. Oh, basically 13 kilovolts, isn't it? So that's slightly less, 13.0 kilovolts. I wonder if it goes any higher anywhere else. Let's have a little look. Oh man, look at that. A lot higher. Jeez. Okay. This is an unfair one, wasn't it, really? Hmm. 
a bit ambiguous the readings to be honest but we'll do our best okay well we said the fifth slide okay let's close that and let's go for put back on the fifth slide again there we go and we'll do the burn time so we'll just open that out a bit a bit more accuracy I know it's not very accurate but it's it's fun isn't it to see how the how things change bit of an eye opener okay so that's the start and let's see the ends about there that way it starts to start that curve so the 0 0.6 so 0 0.61 milliseconds okay right back to the spark tester an 8.7 mil gap coming up right one more turn Yeah, right. Eight point seven millimeter gap. Jeez, I wonder if it'll jump that. Okay, so let's go back to slide number five and see how things are looking. Okay, right. So we'll just close that. Voltage. Peak voltage is. 15.83, wow, okay, 15.83 kilovolts. I'll close that. I'll just stretch it out a little bit. There we go. Okay, it's all looking a bit uh, hotchpotch now, isn't it? It doesn't like that big gap. Okay, so let's just put that on there. And burn time. I think around about somewhere else, somewhere around about there, maybe. It's a bit hard to tell, isn't it? Yeah, let's go with that. So 0 0.37, so 0 0.37 milliseconds. I don't think it's going to be able to jump much more of a gap. Okay, let's go back and set it to 10 millimeters. Okay, another full turn. There we go, that gap is now near as damn it, 10 millimeters. Will it jump it? I don't know. It wasn't looking good on the last graph, was it? Okay, I'll go and set the scope up and we'll get some more readings. Damn, did you see it? We've got the spark it is basically going to ground on some occasions rather than jumping that 10 mil gap so we're going to get a false reading on the scope so what I'm going to need to do now is basically disconnect the uh, the spark tester from the cylinder head and allow it to sort of dangle in the air to prevent that from happening so that might make it a bit harder to film but I'll go and see it set up we'll redo that test again and then hopefully we're going to get some decent uh, decent results here we go right so it's already set to 10 mil just get rid of that clamp now it was sparking to ground out the end of the cap down to here so we need to basically keep that away from the cylinder doesn't matter if this end touches because that's ground anyway and hopefully it's not going to arc down to ground from that point because obviously there's a huge gap it should rather prefer this is the preferred route to jump that gap now hopefully yeah can turn it around to camera a bit better there we are look that's not affected the gap right well you better watch for me and see how it's going to work because it's only because i looked back on the camera that i could see obviously that it was jumping it'd be a lot easier if the spark spark plug was on the other side where the laptop is or bring the laptop to this side i suppose but it's all hindsight isn't it really okay well i'll get you set up and we'll watch that spark Okay, let's see what we've got. So let's go back. Let's look through the waveforms. They're sort of all over the place, aren't they? Okay. Right, well I'm not going to choose number five. I'm going to use I'm going to use that one. That looks like a more more like a normal kind of waveform. Yeah. How about that one there? Look. Okay, that'll do. All right. So, as regards voltage, oh, we'll put the box there. Look. 
Oh, we're bang on 20, aren't we? Okay. So 20 kV. And uh, what have we got for a burn time? Well, let's just open that out a bit. I'm looking a bit odd, isn't it? Not what you'd expect to see at all. But close that one down. And the start, well, the starts, we'll put the start as there, look. And the finish, I would say, is about there. And we've got 0 0.24. 0 0.24 milliseconds. Well, that's going in the right direction. Because we can see that as KV is going up, the burn time is coming down. Excellent. Okay, so we have to use slide number 9 for that one. Those three are all pretty much the same, aren't they, look? That's interesting. Yeah. So you've got to sort of look at a few of these slides and get a general a general idea. Yeah, I would go with that. That works. Okay, so the next job is... We've got three more to go, if you've fallen asleep. It's 11.3 millimetres is the next one. Okay, this is a lot harder to do now, so we've um, got to turn it one more which will be about there. So we've now got 11.3 millimeter gap between those two points. It's a fair gap for the spark to jump, isn't it? On an old bike, these tend not to run at such high voltage. Okay, well, I'll get the scope set up. Let's see what happens, but keep your eye open for any kind of leakage uh, of, the, of the spark. If it's happening anywhere else but between those two points, then we've got a big problem and the results are going to be void. Okay, we've got a problem with the scope. We're over range, so we need to increase that now. That reading to... Geez, next one up is 50 kilovolts. Okay, it won't affect our results, but it just means it's not going to damage the scope. And let's take that again. Here we go. Okay, so the results for an 11.3 mil gap, and I didn't, I'm looking back on the footage, and it didn't look like it jumped the gap at every time. So we're getting really close to the limit of gap um, that the, the voltage that's available from the secondary winding can actually jump. <sighs> okay, well, we'll go back and see what we've got. Yeah. I almost wouldn't know how to. Oh, well, there's one. All right, we'll use that for our our readings then. It's about the only one that's. I think there was quite a few times where it just didn't. We didn't get a spark jump. Yeah, they're all looking a bit sad, aren't they? So we'll go back to. Back to that one. Okay. Right. Well, as regards. Peak voltage, we've got 20.7 kilovolts, and as regards burn time, let's get rid of that. We've got, and I'm taking them all from the sort of the center line, the peak point. We've got, and that's sort of where the oscillations start. 0.2, 0 0.2, yeah, 204, so 0 0.2 milliseconds. Wow. Not very long at all, is it? Okay, well, we'll, we'll go for the next one, 12.6, but I'm not holding out any hope. Right, so one more turn will take us to 12.6 millimeters. Right, that's going off, look. Okay, one more turn. There we go. So that gap now is about 12.6 millimeters from one point to the other. Will it jump that gap? I don't think so. Let's wait and see, won't we? Jeez, I'm going to have to look at the footage to see if that actually, uh, actually sparked. Okay, this is the 12.6 millimeter gap. 
and uh, there was quite a lot of non-spark events. And just to show you what a, what a non-spark event looks like on the scope, you'll see one just there with the instant oscillations from the spark. Well, I say from that that peak, there was no spark going on. We saw quite a few gaps, didn't we? Okay, well, let's try and find something that represents when a spark actually occurred. There's one, there's one. Alright, any more? No, 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 no. Maybe. Okay, so what was it, 12 and 13 slides? Yes. Alright, let's go back to 12. I'll we'll just zoom in. Pretty cool, isn't it? All right, so first job is the voltage. Peak voltage, 22.28. Wow. Okay, 22.3, let's say, kilovolts. And duration. Bit of a difficult one, really, but we'll go for the center line of that. Two. And... I would say probably around about there. It's a bit hard to tell, really. What have we got? Um, mm, mm, 0 0.17. 0 0.17 milliseconds. Okay. Jeez. <clears throat> wow. Okay, well, there was a lot of work and really hard to film with just one camera constantly moving from one side of the bike to the other and doing the screen capture software. I did keep forgetting so I had to redo a couple of bits but um, those are the results we've got so far. We weren't able to do, I don't think we should do the last one, we're getting really intermittent spark with a gap of 12.6. I don't see any point at all in jumping up another 1.3 mil to just shy of 14 millimeters. It's not going to jump that gap hasn't got the grunt of that coil. So, what have we seen from the results? Well, yes, there's a couple of ambiguous ones at the start. Um, but, in general, you can see that as the gap increases, this is the gap increasing down here, we can see that the voltage required is going higher and higher. It starts off around about 6.7 kilovolts, Yes, a bit of a glitch here, but it goes 7, 8.8, 13, what's that one, 15.83, 20, 20.7, 20 and it really peaked out at 22.3 kilovolts. And at the same time, the burn time of the spark started off at 2.4 milliseconds, and again, again, there's a few little glitches in there, but the general trend is... It ended up at 0 0.17 milliseconds, a fraction of the burn time at the start at the correct, don't forget, the correct um, spark plug gap. Now, I'm, I'm actually quite happy with those results. I'm sure there'll be lots of people who put things in the comments to say, hey, you should have done this, should have done this. They're a bit ambiguous. You should have maybe done averages and all that kind of thing. But I could have spent days doing it. And it was really just an insight to show you the, the difference, what happens as spark plug gap increases, how does that affect the KV voltage, and how does it affect burn time. I think we've pretty much covered that. One last thing to do, and that is to pull out the spark plug, set the spark plug gap to 0.9 millimeters, which is what it should be by the book, and we'll capture a, um, a secondary KV waveform from that, and we'll compare that to our atmospheric readings. And that way, we should be able to you know, have a pretty good idea what kind of a gap we should be setting our spark tester to, to check to make sure we're going to get a good spark in the cylinder with a 0.9 mil gap on the spark plug. You see where I'm coming from? Hope so. OK, right. Back to the bike, I'm going to pull the plug out, bring it back to the bench, and we'll measure the gap that's on it at the moment, and if we, we might need to adjust it. I don't know. I've probably never had the spark plug out. Can't remember. Okay, almost there, crew. Right, there he is, hiding down the bottom. Yep, 
Now, obviously we don't need to use the spark tester anymore. We're just going to yeah, use the scope. Because it'll be plumbed directly onto the spark plug for the next test. Maybe we should do an out, out of cylinder one as well, just to see how it's going to be outside. There we go, one sparking plug. Right, let's go measure that gap. Okay, now remember it should be, if all is correct, a 0 0.9 mil gap. So this is a 0 0.9 mil feeler gauge. It should be a nice snug fit into there. It's not. The gap is too small. Definitely. Okay, so let's see what it is. Let's go down a bit. Well, there's a 0.75. Is that going to fit? Nope. Okay, there's a 0.6. Let's try that one. Yes, just. 0.65. Yes, perfect. Okay, so the gap on that spark plug at the moment is 0 0.65 millimeters which means it's smaller than it should be, which means, based on the results we've had so far, the KV is going to be down, the voltage of the spark is going to be way down, we don't know what it is, but it's going to be down, and uh, the burn time is going to be quite long. So we could test that. So we'll do that now, we'll test that knowing it's a 065 mil gap. Uh, we'll just clamp it onto the head so it's grounded. I'll use a you know, yeah, we'll just clamp it down with the mill grips, that'll work. And we'll take a waveform to see just what the KV and the burn time is. And then we'll set the plug gap to 0.9. We'll check it again in atmosphere. And then we'll do our final test in cylinder. Wow, so much to do. This is an awesome video. Right, chaps, you're all set up. There's the spark plug. It's grounded and it's got the 0.65 mil gap. I'm going to whiz around and capture the waveform. You can watch the spark if you like. Why we're not getting a reading? We're not getting a reading. What's going on, Mr. Pico Scout? Damn! Okay, so it turns out that I can't get the scope to pick up on the waveform, the induced voltage, into its sensor. I think because the KV voltage is so low because the plug's only got a 0.65 mil gap. So, proof of concept, I'll grab the plug, we'll make it 0.9, we'll try the test again, see if the scope will start to get a reading. If it does, then that's proof that we can't take a reading in atmosphere of a 0.65 gap because the KV is too low. It's a learning curve, isn't it? Right, I'll go and grab the plug. I'll see you back at the bench. Okay, one sparking plug. Now I do have a tool somewhere. Jeez! Oh. Bear with me, people. Okay, here we go. This is one. Right. It's another kind of gizmo. Ooh, power bill. Cover that up quick. Okay. Bought it years ago. So we need to make the gap bigger. So to do that, we can just pop that in there if it will fit. It needs a bigger one. There we are. Look. We can just give it a little tweak. Come on, mister. You can do it. The idea is you don't damage the insulation and stuff. It's not doing a very good job, is it? Right, hang on, let's have another go. There we are, right. Point 0.9 we said it should be, didn't we? Oh, Mr. Young, that's a bit big. It's a bit too much. Jeez. Alright, I'll give it another tweak. Should be able to close it as well. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe I've got to just give it a little push on the bench. Hang on. Bear with me. Let's see what that is. Nope, too much. And hang on, get rid of the mat. No, nope, get rid of the mat. Still looks too much. It's 
not far off. Oh, that's better. And it's too small again. <clears throat> Jeez, hang on. I'll do it the way Andy normally does it. And I know people are going to get really mental with me now. What are you doing? How can you possibly be a mechanic doing that? Well, believe it or not, I am. And we all have our own bad habits, don't we? Slightly more. Pretty sure it's not going to harm it. Okay, well, that, people, is a good fit for a 0.9 mil feeler gauge. Right, let's go back to the bike and test it again. Hopefully, this time, we'll get a reading on the scope. Right, 0.9 mil gap. <sighs> Here we go. Okay, we'll start the scope. No reading. Okay, well, maybe that's just the way it is. So we didn't get a reading on the scope again, which is really weird. Because, you know, it's definitely a spark, isn't there? Okay, so we know that's that plus uh, 0 0.9 mil. We're going to put the spark plug back down the hole and do a final check. Now, we do know, I know, that the voltage required to jump that gap in a pressured environment will be higher than when it is in atmosphere, so we may well then start to see some readings on the scope. Hope so. Right, we'll just take the sensor off for now. Remind me to fit that, get fat, fit that back on again. Okay, so the earth lead can go. Spark plug out of the cap. And now it needs to go back down the hole, doesn't it? It's not the easiest one to get to. It's going to be all fingers and thumbs. Maybe I can just drop it in my fingers, actually. Let's have a go. It's a bit dark. There we go. She's started. Excellent. It's been a long day of filming this, you know. All the batteries are going flat. It's not good. Right. <clears throat> One ratchet. Now, obviously, I'll be talking this, um, this spark plug to spec. Click. There we go. I use the same torque wrench as there we go. Right, that can go on there. And we should hear a little clicking noise as it goes down. Jeez, a bit tight. There we go. Great stuff. One more reading to take. Oh, hang on. I nearly forgot. Let's stick the probe back on there again. Away from that earth. We don't want it grounding out, do we? There we go. Right. Back to the laptop. Okay, final test. Spark plug has got a 0 0.9 mil gap and it's in the cylinder. Oh, we should be getting a, uh, a reading now. This is ridiculous. Okay, press play. Got recording. Press the fire button. Perfect. That'll work for me. Okay, so let's have a little look at what we've got. Well, same kind of readings. If we just scout back and make sure we're getting similar kind of results for each one. Yes, we did go over range a little bit now and again, but I think the average is... I think we're okay at that. Okay, so if we go to the fifth one, it's a pretty clean kind of reading. So as regards voltage, we've got in cylinder 8.8 .8. so in cylinder this is the 0 0.9 gap we have got what was it 8.8 .8 kilovolts and we'll kill that off our burn time 
Dum dum dum. Accuracy required. There we go. Pull that across. Pretty clear where the start and finish is. Let's go for the peak. There we go. Like we did all the rest of them. Be consistent, Mr. Young. And the burn time is 1.17 milliseconds. 1.17. Well, actually, 1.18 milliseconds with a 0 0.9 mil gap. Okay, well how does that compare to our in-atmosphere readings? Well, let's go and take a look. You know, for any of you guys that are interested out there, this video has taken me about four hours to film. Wow, it just takes ages. It's not like one of my normal videos. It's a bit different because there's a lot more stuff going on with regards to the camera work. So, the results were, what was it? 8.8 .8 kilovolts. 8.8 kV and the burn time was 1.18 1.18 milliseconds for the burn time and that was a 0 0.9 mil gap on a spark plug in cylinder and this bike hasn't got a particularly high compression ratio either so the same plug gap or the same gap that's weird because on the spark tester we got a result Don't know. That is weird. Okay. Well, anyway, so on the spark tester set at 0 0.9 mil in atmosphere, we had 6.7 and a 2.4 uh, millisecond burn time. In cylinder, the KVs went up to 8.8 .8, and the burn time dropped, as it would do, you'd expect that to 1.18 milliseconds. So, it just so happens, and this is not rigged, I've just spotted it now, <sighs> on the spark tester in atmosphere, an 8.8 .8 kV um, peak voltage, which is the same as the spark plug in cylinder, was a 4.8 millimeter gap, and that gave us a burn time of, well, just over one second, 1.07, so it's Again, very close. Now, this is all, you know, rounded off. So, as a rule of thumb, based on that information, I would say that if you were checking the spark on this bike uh, in atmosphere, the strength of the, the output of the coil, you'd want to be getting the, uh, the spark to jump a 5 millimeter gap, 4.8 to 5 millimeter gap in atmosphere, to be the equivalent of it jumping a 0 0.9 mil gap inside the cylinder under pressure, basically. Because don't forget, the pistons come up, it squashed the air and fuel mixture. It's probably on that bike, I don't know, 9 to 1 ratio, maybe 9 and a half to 1. So it's, you know, in a pretty high pressure environment, and the voltage needs to be a lot higher to jump that gap to force its way through that, um, well, the air fuel mixture, I suppose, and, and to create the spark and the point of ignition. So, interesting stuff. I would say 5 mil gap uh, in atmosphere would be the minimum that you would require to, to prove that you're getting a spark in the cylinder. Ah, wow, the conclusion took about 10 seconds and gathering the data took bloody ages. Well, there you go. We've used the Pico scope, the automotive scope, in a, a new way. It's the first time using that scope that I've captured secondary winding data and it's the first time I've ever actually tried to analyze it like this and we can see the trend you know as the gap gets bigger the KV goes up and the burn time goes down simple there's only so much energy being created by that secondary winding and if we're going to rack up the voltage to jump the gap then of course the spark won't last as long common sense but we've proved it definitely today. Okay crew, well hopefully you found this video interesting and helpful and I'll go right back to the start. My sincere apologies that tall girl Hannah is not here filming with me today. I will promise you reprimand her as soon as I see her. <laughs> Alright crew, why not click on the subscribe button uh, then you'll see a little gear icon turn up, click on the gear icon and then you can tick the box and turn on notifications. If you're on a smart device, 
ring the bell does the same thing and our friends down at YouTube will send you an email as and when I upload any new videos. You'll also find me on Facebook, Instagram, Google Plus and Twitter. Feel free to communicate through any of those portals. Uh, first point of contact if you don't mind though through the comments on YouTube because that's where I go to answer all the questions. If it gets real technical then yes we'll go a different route. There's also a Patreon page. It's quite quite recently new. There's some information about the history of the Andy Mechanic YouTube channel and where it's heading. A bit more behind the scenes stuff too. So check it out and if you want to donate you can do that via that page. Alright chaps, well that's about it. I've got a ton of editing to undo to make this video work for you. Alright, see you around. Cheers. Over and out. Now then, tool girl Sam. How are I'm you? Back. You're back! It's fantastic! So I know, and I've got a new shirt, so I thought it's only right that I give you a new shirt too, so there you go. So excited for my new shirt. And I don't have to wear different shirts every day. And as a classic Tall Girl Sam move, I am going to wear it like this. Wow, would you look at that? I'd say that is a great present for your girlfriend. She's into tools. If she's not, she's probably into tools because you're a tool. See what I did there? Tool girl shirt. Perfect.